in personal finance, planning and budgeting are very, very important areas. You should be able to plan for expenses, plan for your income, plan for any actions that relate, that relate to spending and earning money. And you should also be able to budget. And I'm going to take you through this, which means actually it is actually very important that all of us have done our own financial budgets and we have actually been able to plan very well. I know a number of you might ask me, how do I do this? Now, before I take you on how you can actually do A, B, C and D of this, I think it's actually important to look at how do we, what approaches can we be able to use in planning. Now, when you're planning, which I'm calling the planning approach, the first thing that you need to do is to determine the concrete goals. I know a number of you that are watching me have a number of goals. You can have a hundred goals. Some of you have about 20. I know some of you are listening or hearing me and are saying, probably maybe I should go into um, tree planting. Maybe I should go into uh, have a, a general hard, a hardware. Or maybe I should go into uh, bakery. Now, what I want to do with you is now to be able to come up with concrete financial goals. Now, what you need to do is you list all of them. If you have a piece of paper, list down every single thing that you're dreaming of, of having. Now, out of all of this, you have to actually determine which is actually much more important, which is actually much more near you. You might be able to think about something a little bit much, far, much more far away from you, when actually even what you have within you has not yet been worked on. I remember one time when I met a lady that was actually trading in grains. She was trading in grains, but also fruits. She would collect fruits from Soroti and then bring them to town in Nakasero market, in Owino market and sell them. And then I asked her, what actually your concrete goals? She was already struggling in these areas that she had, but in that same, she was even thinking of a taxi. She was telling me I need to buy a taxi for business. And I said, but are you already satisfied with what you're doing now? Now, I want to ask you, out of all those areas that you're thinking about, let us think to those that you're already engaged in, and then we can later look at those that are going to come in future. Now, out of this that you've had, let's say I'm this lady. I was already in grains, and that is maize, because she used to collect maize from farmers, and then she would actually pack it in sacks and then sell it. And when we actually go, went into with her discussion, we actually came up with concrete goals. She made a decision that actually it would make a lot of sense. Instead of just selling maize and grains, she could actually add value. She could actually be able to mill it into maize flour. She even came up with a goal of actually having a proper meal, pack maize, brand it, and then sell it to supermarkets. So we actually realized that actually our goals were becoming much more concrete. And from that we said, how do we come up with an action plan? Now, here you are. You are a trader in grain mills, okay? You are selling maize, which is just in, in, in seeds. And your, your goal actually is to ensure that one day you are another magaji of grain millers out there. It means you have to create an action plan because this needs money. If you, you have just been a trader, you want to start bulking, you want to start meaning, it means you must decide to come up with an action plan and this action plan means what exactly do you have to do to be able to achieve that goal that you want of being a, a maganjo grain miller where you are and it means you have to actually decide on a future action now means what you can do right now but also a future course of action. I have a very small salon at my home. I have been rearing cattle at my home. And maybe if I'm in the cattle business, you have milk already. Start bulking it. Maybe in future, you even never know. But those decisions that you want to make actually come with a future course of action, which means you have to set aside some money, which means maybe you have to start planning over a bigger piece of land, which means you have to start planning on where it will be located, which means you have to start planning on where you get the finances. And to me, this is actually much more important. And if you've actually come up with your action plan and what you have to be, do in future, then you have to keep on evaluating your performance.
on how you're performing on each and every stage. If you have determined and said, if I'm going to, I'm in dairy, I'm in dairy, I have two cows at the moment. And you're saying, every two years or every year, I will be able to buy an extra dairy cow. Then you have to evaluate yourself and say, this year have I been able to buy this extra cow? One of the biggest challenges that we have today in Uganda, among all of us, is that we never plan for our income and we never plan for our expenses. Actually, there are a number of people. If you do a random, a random survey, out of every 10 people, you'd find that only three would actually plan for their personal expenses on a monthly basis. And I think that by going through this module today, you can actually be able to plan and know this is the income that I have and this is the expenses that I plan to have. I know if you are watching me, I can ask you, do you know how much money that you earn on a monthly basis? I have had a session and I asked people, how much do you earn? And they had to scratch their heads because they were not so sure of how much they earn. And I want to ask you, do you know how much that you earn? Now, I request that if you have a piece of paper, you have your notebook, please list all the sources of income that you have. I know some of you might be able to earn salaries. Please list. I know most men do not even want to tell how much they earn. But please, you have your notebook. Write down how much salary that you get. I know some say, I don't, I don't bother to even know what I earn because the bank takes everything. Again, you need to know. So list down how much do I earn out of salary? How much do I earn out of business income? A number of us have smaller sources of income, businesses here and there, but we need to ask ourselves, how much do we earn from there? And if you don't do that, then there's a problem. If you're not employed and you're employing yourself, you still need to know how much salary does my business give me. Now, I want to also ask you, think about any other area where you get money. I know a number of you who are listening, if you're parents, you also have what we call grants. This is called Kunemeka. I know some of you have children and you know, Tom is going to give me a hundred this month. Jane will give me about 50,000. Please list all these areas. Some of you probably are lucky and maybe you get free money. There are a number of programs that provide free money. Then you need to write and say, this is how much I get from the free sources of income. And then write down the money you get in rent. If you have any rental area, areas where you can get rental income, please write it. I have not exhausted all areas. I know some of you get allowances, you may be counselors where you in your own villages, or maybe you, you, you are, even if you are, you do on a temporary basis as a trainer somewhere and you get an allowance, you can do an average and say on average, this is what exactly I'm. And to me, this is very important because a number of times we live beyond our means. I have interviewed a number of people. And if you ask them, how much do you spend in a month? When you start counting and counting and counting, they are spending like 800,000. But when we start listing the income, it is like 400. And this is very common. Those of you that are staying in cities, you realize that actually the cost of living in Uganda is extremely high. If on a daily basis you are spending so much on eating, on transport, then it is actually much more important that you start doing it today. If you have not been doing, if you've not been, uh, you know, listing all sources of your income, even if you're a woman, I've trained in uh, training sessions and men always said, ah, but you know these women always get money from other sources. Yes, list down those sources and make it as an average because this is going to determine how you live your life. Now, after listing all your sources of income, okay, just imagine if you have listed all these sources, you've indicated how much that you get in salary, business income, any other sources, then we have to go to your expenses on a daily basis. This to me is actually very, very important. If you have not been doing this, please, it is never too late. Start it today and right now. So let's get our pens. Now, when we look at expenses, they are split into two. We have what we call fixed expenses, or those that we know that will happen. And then we have variable. This, this depends. This really depends. 
Now, there are some things, what I've called fixed is something that we know that would actually come and sometimes we do not have control over it. Please write down how much you spend on these various items, on electricity, on water at home, on school fees. If you have three children and every time you pay 400,000, it means if there are three children, that is 1.2 million per term. So you divide, and we know a term always has four months on average. So you get 1.2 million and you divide it by the four months, which gives you an expense, which means every month your expense on school fees is actually 300,000. We look at loans. If you have a loan, please put it as your expenditure. Some of you have advances. You've already received an advance, you supply it somewhere in a supermarket and they have already advanced you or you have a salary and they have already actually reduced this money or they always deduct it on a monthly basis. You should plan for all these things. Some of you even have parents. You have parents where you actually spend money. You have to look after them. You have to make sure they eat food. So please let us list all these things. You might even have other things like rent. Maybe you're renting. So it is actually very important that you list all these particular expenses. And after listing all, all these particular expenses that we know and we cannot control, you actually sum up how much this add up to, up to. I can tell you food is very, very expensive. When we are in our homes today, you go and shop. The other day you go and shop. The following day you go and shop. But I can tell you at the end of the month, you might realize that you've actually spent 500000 If you can get all your receipts, Go back at home and pick all those receipts and see. Or start calculating. You're actually going to realize that you're spending a lot of money on food. If you have not been doing it today, please come up with your menu from Monday up to Sunday. Come up with an average and know in my home, my budget for food is 200000 My budget for food is 300000 We have to live within our means. And a number of times, food is a problem. Why? Because even what we have left... You cook so much that you don't need. What you have left, you just throw away. Why people never throw away things? They put them back in the fridge. If you don't have a fridge, then cook what you can manage to eat. Airtime. <clears throat> Ten years ago, before telecom companies came, would live without airtime. People would come to town and live without a mobile phone. But now, if Jack left his phone at home, he can't even settle. He has to run back and say, oh, I have to go and get my phone. But before, remember, remind me in 1989, where there, was there a phone? Where weren't we living? But now we cannot live without airtime. And a number of times, the moment you know 10,000 or 5,000, you talk, Pakalast. But I want to say, whenever you're talking, you have to remember you're actually spending money. Even if you say, I'm only spending 1,000 per day, that is 30,000 a month. Even if you say I'm only spending 5000 per day, that is 150000 a month. Do you know that? So let us start planning even how much airtime that we spend on our own, in our own lives. Fuel. A number of times, actually, we never plan for fuel. And I can tell you, this is a very big waste of money. When you hear that so-and-so's mom has died or something, there's a wedding, you drive your car and go there. But in your mind, you are forgetting that actually it comes with a cost. I have had cases whereby people sit in my car and go to a wedding and they have asked you for a lift. And they want you to drop them even where they are staying. You didn't have any arrangement for me to use my car. But I'm using my car to drop all of you where you're staying. That means that actually I'm spending money on fuel that I didn't plan for. There are so many other things like clothing. I know if you're a lady and you're watching me, for us when it comes to clothing, we always want to shop anytime. You see something, you want to shop it. But I can say, let us plan on when we have to shop. Let us say, when I get my money every two months, I'll get 10% of my salary of whatever I get from my business, and then I'll be able to spend it on clothing. There is entertainment. This is another big disaster. Because when it comes to entertainment, we never plan. Even when you say, I'm going to watch Arsenal versus Manchester, man, you. When you're there, you're taking a beer. You are taking juice. You, you did come by, 
by 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 just in, in in air you use probably transport you either drove a car you, you either drove a motorcycle you either took a taxi so when we are having entertainment we should actually plan for it and i know a number of you if you have a business and probably you have won a tender or they have just paid you that big check you're going to call everyone and then start spending the money in entertainment and i'm saying let us plan for it there are other things actually like wedding funerals i want to tell you ugandans in Uganda is a Uganda is a wedding country. Uganda is a country of death. So every day people die, every day people marry. We have to learn to be blunt. In the local saying, they say you have to be dry. If it is a wedding, you should say for me. If it is a wedding, my pledge is always twenty thousand or fifty, and I give it cash. Don't see uh, some saying for me. I'm give, I've, I've, I've been in a meeting whereby someone say I'm pledging five hundred. The other also stood from the chair and said, me, I'll give one million. You should not do things by impulse. If it is a wedding, say, if it is my immediate family member, I'll give 100. If it is just a friend, I'll give 50,000. If I don't know you that much, I'll give 10. You can even give 5,000. You can even be frank and say, I don't have, but I'll be willing to serve. If it means washing plates, I'll wash. If it means cleaning the compound, I will do it. So we should be able to actually plan very, very well for weddings. And this is another area where people spend a lot of money because when they invite you for the wedding, you also have to buy dresses, the clothes, you have to put fuel in the car, you have to maybe get transport, and then you have to pledge. And I can tell you if you're watching me, there is no, you cannot spend three months without being called for a wedding meeting. Finance. Now, how do we plan for funerals? As I did indicate to you, Uganda is a country of funerals. In, in Africa now, if you go to countries like Ghana, they have set aside weekends for funerals. For them, they have said, even if you've died on Monday, they will keep your body until the weekend and they bury you eat. Because they realize actually funerals are an expensive area. I can tell you, if your phone is off, the funeral will still continue. It is actually some of us that have actually put ourselves in this cost of funerals because funerals are very expensive. It is not that everyone you have to bury. It is not that everyone you have to contribute 200,000 or a million. You can even contribute less. And for me, I think it is actually always much more better for us because we know in Uganda people die to say out of all my income, I'm setting aside a certain percentage, maybe every month 10,000 or 20,000 or 50,000 to meet these costs. So that if it doesn't happen, you have already an accumulative figure. Church. Church is also another area. I'm not saying you should not give, but you should give what you have. I know a number of people who actually end up giving even what they don't have. They borrow to give. To me, I don't think that actually that can even make God happy. Let us give what, because there's a saying that give what belongs to Caesar to Caesar and give what belongs to God to God. And I'm saying, let us live within our limits when we are even giving gifts. Because it does not make sense to you to borrow money and give. Or to live beyond your expectations because you have to give. How much are we spending on our spouses? <coughs> if you're watching me and you're a young man, I know basically you have to spend on your girlfriend. Because if you don't spend, I mean today in this era, women believe in money. They will disappear. Or on the other hand, actually, I know we also have scenarios of men who are now approaching on women's income. So probably you have to determine how much can I be able to give. I remember when I was talking to the new recruits in the public service, and there were over 800 in Champwanzi, and a number of them asked me, how much can I be able to give to my girlfriend? For me, I think you should be able to give what you can afford and what you have actually been able to plan for. You can't give a car when you can afford it. You can't give one million when your, your income is 500,000 or 200,000. I think you should be able to live within your means. Even when it comes to spouses, when it comes to children, I know so many families that stress themselves to make sure that their children live like the Murana's children or they live like Sudiri's children. If you're not, a, why would your children live like that? You should be able to live within your means. If you're watching me, I definitely know you are in a financial trap. I know your expenses are higher, 
and your income is fixed. So it means actually you have to make changes in your life. And the first thing you have to realize is that right now you are in a financial trap. But you have to get over it. And to me, these are the things that we actually have to look at to be able to get out of it. One, we have to stick to monthly plans. As I did indicate to you, after listing your income and expenses, now today, right now, with your family, sit down and start listing. Be realistic. I know it is never in families realistic. You would find that women don't want to reveal how much they earn. Men don't want to reveal how much they, they earn. But I think let's try and be realistic to ourselves and say this is how much this family earns. And then let us stick to our monthly plans to say this is how we are going to spend this money. And after doing this, to me, I have always said it is always better to save more. But if you can't, at least 10% of your income should go to savings. Because you realize that a number of us never save at all. We always compete in spending. I would rather, we would rather compete in earning than competing in spending. And to me, as I said, I think it is always very important to discuss your income and expenses with family. And to me, when I say family, it even involves children. Because you realize that when we, look, we went through the expenses, some of them are linked to the children. Some of them are linked to your spouses. Probably your children do not even value the food. They just throw it away. Or maybe your maid does not understand that you have to save some things. Or maybe your children do not value that when you're in the house, you only need a light in the room where you're in. Or maybe you don't have to leave the TV running when there is no one watching it. And that is the more reason why we actually have to discuss our income, expenses with our family. And then let us live a realistic life. We have to know who we are. And then we should be able to live exactly who we are. If it is dressing, dress what you can afford. If it is eating, you can still eat nutritional food at the minimal cost. You, what you get in ShopRite, you can still get the same in Nakasero and Owino Market and Kaliri. But what kind of decision do you have to make? And to me, that is why it is actually very important to live a realistic life. There is no reason why you buy a car and you don't need it. There is no reason why you are both struggling as a family and you both have a car. The husband has a car, the wife has a car. What is the problem with you sharing one car? And what is the problem setting aside that car to do something else where income can be able to come? I know that all of us are now in a financial trap. And these are some of the things that we actually need to do. If you realize that for the past three months, I know so many people who say, I can hardly have any income on me. You always earn a salary, but normally by the third day of the month, there's nothing on your account. Or you have a business, the moment you were paid for your supplies, you have nothing left. One thing I have to advise you, one first step, collect and document all your assets. Because these assets can actually give us some income. I know of someone who was actually struggling and struggling and struggling. And when I, we took her through this session and said, please document all your assets, he actually realized he had two houses that he wasn't using. Some of us even have land and we are not even using it. We don't even know where it is. I know people who have land, I don't, don't even know where the, the, the assets of the land is, the, the registry of the land is. I know people actually who have houses and they don't even know how much they earn from a house in Nadia, the house in Namburu, the house in Imbarara, they don't even know. So this is the time now for you to sit down and start documenting. Slowly look at every single thing that you have. This would actually help you to manage your life slowly because you can aid. I know some people that have actually started business not through borrowing because it is not always the best option to start with, but because they have been able to sell off some of their assets. The other thing that you also have to do is to document and analyze all your expenses. Sit down and start listing down and whatever you list every single month, please do it on, on a monthly basis. Document and analyze your expenses. 
Look at some of these things and say, are they really, really worth it? Is it really worth for me to spend a lot of money on, on cable TV when I don't need it? Because you're spending money for cable TV because of football. But again, when it is football time, you drive the car and go to the bar. Then start analyzing and say, maybe I need to go to a, 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 cheaper, a cheaper package. A number of people actually might be spending a lot of money on medical expenses. And maybe if you made a decision to take an insurance, a medical insurance, then probably it might even be cheaper. Have you ever tried to understand how much you spend per, month, per year on, on health? If you're spending over two million, then why don't take an insurance package? Communication. It is actually very important for you to communicate. Communicate within your family so that they understand what kind of position you're in. I know a number of people do not want to communicate. If men are going through a very, very hard time, they, don't, they just keep quiet. They don't want to talk. Sometimes he doesn't have the money and say, no, 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 you know this standard delayed a little bit. But the reality is you don't have the money. Be realistic to your family and tell them, Madam, today and my daughter's a son, there's no money now. I don't expect to get so much in the next three months. Such that actually you can live that life where you're able to live in, within that situation when there is no money. Maintaining a good credit history, this is actually very critical because there are times when we don't have money and because of the good credit history, you're actually able to get some things on credit. I know a number of people that have established good relationship with markets, with um, the clinics, and they're able to actually have things on credit because if you have to borrow, to actually now be able to meet some of these things, it would actually be very expensive. But what is very important is the history. I know, and I have a shop myself, I have boutiques, but I have a challenge. People come to you, you give them things on credit, and they sell pay within a month. After a month, you wait for the call, you don't get any call. And I know it is what you're facing. If you're watching me, you're actually going through the same struggle where you're giving people things on credit and paying is a problem. Or you are the person who is actually not paying. If you have been getting things on credit and you are watching me, please maintain it. Keep it up. You do not have to be reminded. I know when they call you to say, um, Madam uh, uh, Margaret, it, you have not paid for a month. You say, but I know. But if you know, then why didn't you pay? Why do you have to be reminded? We should be able to keep this because this can actually help us in the time of need. Managing your debt. 